Hello students, welcome to my class. Today we are going to discuss about the topic capacitors and capacitance in the unit number one electrostatics. So uh, you can see the pictures of the capacitors here and these are all the different types and the varieties of capacitors available in the market and it is of different uh, shape and size based upon the value of the capacitance it has and these capacitors are more common in the in most of the devices that we see in our day to day life uh, like uh, computers and TVs on etc mm, so what is this capacitors and what is this used for why do we study about these capacitors in this lesson electrostatics let's go into the topic now so what is a capacitor Capacitor is nothing but a device like what we see here. It is a device used to store the electric charges and the energy. It is a device to store the charges. So as we study about the charges, it is simply the charges that is stored without any uh, external thing which is called which is related to the electrostatics. So capacitors is a device to store the charge. And how does this store the charges? Uh, the capacitors are actually the th uh, device which consists of two plates or sheets like conducting objects. They are the conducting things. And these two charge sheet, two sheets are separated by, a, by some distance. Kept separately by some distance. As you can depict in the picture here, the two... Uh, rod like thing which is in brown color is what is the capacitors that is two plates which is separated by some distance and this uh, distance can be an empty space or it can be filled with a dielectric material you have two different cases of capacitors in here so these two plates as it is the conductors it will allow the charges to stay on the plates and it is getting charged here you can see that in the picture here when you connect a battery to the capacitor the charges will be moving towards the capacitor a capacitor is a conductor it has both the uh, negative charges and the positive charges when you connect to the battery the negative charge from the capacitor will move towards the battery and the positive charge will be moved towards the capacitor and will be stored in the capacitor this is called charging of the capacitor when when you connect a capacitor to the battery it gets charged up after when you remove the battery from the capacitor you can see the charges get discharged from the capacitor as we know that it is stored for some time in the capacitor and when it is needed it is discharged from out from the capacitors so what is the capacitance the amount of charge that can be stored in any one of the plates the quantity is called as the capacitance So how much of charge that can be hold in a plate, in, a, in one plate of a capacitor? So it depends upon the potential, that is the battery's potential we give across the capacitors. So how much amount of potential you give, that much amount of charges will be pushed to the plates and that much amount of charges will be hold in the plate. So it is directly proportional to the potential difference. So my charge is directly proportional to the potential difference I give. So the charge is directly proportional to the potential I give. And when I remove this proportional proportionality, I have to add up one constant here. So which is my C. So when I remove this, I'm go, I go for Q is equal to add up one constant here and have this V as such. So Q is equal to CV. The C is called the proportionality constant and here it means the capacitance. 
the amount of charge that the capacitor can hold and the symbol of the capacitance is this one which is simply as i said capacitor by itself is the two plates separated by a distance so it is like the two lines which is two parallel lines that is two parallel plates this is the symbol to represent the capacitors next the capacitance capacitance as i said it is the amount of charge that can be stored in the capacitor each capacitor has its own uh, capacity so one capacitor can hold only some two charges one of the capacitor can hold some 10 charges so the capacitance is that how much number of charges is stored inside the capacitor so as we have derived, uh, know that known that q is equal to cv the c is the capacitance so to define cv sorry to define capacitance you have to go for the value of c here so take the above equation you have q is equal to c into v in that you're going to calculate the capacitance of a capacitor how much a capacitor can hold it depends upon so c is equal to bring this v to the other side you have c is equal to q by v so this is one capacitance value this is how you can find the capacitance of a capacitor so si unit of this capacitance is c as it is charged by potential difference the unit of charges we know that it is coulomb and the unit of potential difference is voltage volt so it is coulomb by volt so as usual this si unit of capacitance is nothing but coulomb per volt or it can also be given as farad it the unit of capacitance si unit of capacitance is also farad which is capital f it is named after the person michael faraday so by definition which is given in your book the you can have this in your mind the formula as c is equal to q by v which you are going to replace which you are going to write it as your definition here so see that the capacitance c is equal to the charge value the magnitude of the charge by the potential difference so you are going to write it in the words here so if if it is q by v you can write it as the ratio right so the capacitance of a capacitor c is equal to so it's defined as what does it ratio the ratio of ratio between what the charge and the potential difference so magnitude of the charge of the conductor plates to the potential difference between the conductors so the capacitance is nothing but capacitance is defined as the ratio the ratio of the magnitude of the charge on the conducting plates to the potential difference existing between the conductors i hope it is easily understandable for understandable for you so we shall move on with the next thing to understand so the capacitance and capacitors what we have talked about right now is all about the charges that a single plate can hold now the capacitor by itself is the two plates separated by a distance so it is two parallel plates so now we are going to calculate how much of charges this two parallel plates can hold and what happens for this so again the capacitance is always depends upon the potential we apply how much our extra charges we apply on the plates that much of charges will be going and attaching to the plates in the capacitors and will be stored there so when you have two plates and see when i connect a battery it is usual that it is one positive and one negative terminal of the battery and so one of the side of the plate is connected to the positive terminal and one of the sides of the plate is connected to the negative terminal so by it is obvious that one side will acquire a positive charge and other side of the plate will acquire a negative charge so when it is so the distance which we separated the plates will have an force between the uh, charges which is your electrostatic force and an electric field will be induced on each other on the either sides of the plates so the potential what we give 
that is equivalent to the electric field and into the distance between the plates so how much of our potential we give that much of our electric uh, charges will be induced and that much of our electric field strength will be higher in the distance between the plates so it is e into d and what is this electric field value here is the electric field value e depends upon the number of charges so if i have less number of charges the electric field will be less up so it depends upon the thing called charge density charge density and the distance and you have a di some distance over here right and the permittivity of the distance here so electric field value is nothing but the charge density on the plate divided by the epsilon naught which is your permittivity charge density is nothing but density it means i have a space i have an area and how many number of persons or how many number of things that is placed in this area is called the density Okay. If you have some small area and I have six members standing here, the density is somewhat okay. And when this area is very much smaller now, same six members standing here could not stand, could not be, uh, 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 could not be possible here. And so the density is higher here. It is the number of persons and the area. So the charge density sigma can be written as the number of charges. Divided by the area. So my E value, the electric field value is nothing but instead of sigma it is Q by A. So Q by A divided by sigma is my electric field value. So here substitute here in the equation V is equal to E into D. So it is Q by A by epsilon naught into D. And this is what is the voltage value that is supplied to the two plates here. And that is what we have calculated so we know that here we are going to calculate the capacitance of such a capacitor so the capacitance c is equal to q by v and q by instead of v substitute this value on the whole into the value here into the equation here so it is q by q into d by a bring this a to the denominator so it is q into d by a into epsilon naught so it is instead of v it is q into d by a into epsilon naught so this q and q will get cancelled off and this a by epsilon naught a into epsilon naught bring to the numerator that is it is inverse write it as inverse here so you will get it as a into epsilon naught by d which is my capacitance for the parallel plate capacitor when you have two plates and you can see that the capacitance increases as the area of the plate increases and the capacitance decreases as the distance between the plates is increased that is capacitance is directly proportional to the area and the capacitance is inversely proportional to the distance yeah so you can understand this by when you have the larger area of plate you can have a larger number of charges here that is you can uh, it can store larger amount of charge that is the capacitance will increase so the capacitance is directly proportional to the area so this is about the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor the next important thing that you have to understand is fringing field the fringing field is nothing but when you have see when you have two plates that is the capacitance generally the two plates and when you have two plates one is positively charged and the other, neg uh, other one is negatively charged you can see that the electric field lines move outwards from the positive charge towards the negative charge when these plates are infinitely long this uh, lines will be as such parallel but when this length of the capacitor is smaller you have some finite end here at the ends you can see the electric field lines for this charge at the end of the plate will create a field which is creating electric field lines 
in this circular shape in a uh, semicircle shape that is moving towards a negative charge here the field lines are bent towards each other and this bending of the bending bending of the electric field lines is called as the fringing field this condition will be existing only when the capacitors are finite it ends up somewhere at the ending point only the electric field lines will be bending with each other if the distance if the plates are larger then this is then this, this effect will not be seen and you can see the main application of the capacitor is that you can see uh, this capacitors in your fans when you switch on the fan sometimes the fan uh, doesn't rotate immediately and it stucks up you want to uh, manually ro rotate your fan rotate your uh, fans so that it gets started up the thing is the capacitors charging capacity the charging value of the capacitor is failed here and you have to replace the capacitor the capacitor here it is called as generally the condensers why because uh, for anything to rotate you need a torque and the initial torque when you switch on the fans the initial torque is provided by this capacitors which is charged up when you switch on the fan first the condenser the ca condenser will charge up and this condenser will provide the initial torque for the fan so initial start up torque is provided by the condenser and then it and then the fan gets up picks up the speed and rotates but when this condenser is failed when you switch on the fan the condenser will not properly give the torque there so you have to pro manually provide the torque by rotating the fans i hope you have understood please go through with your book please subscribe to my channel thank you